Juanetta Hill. Sandra Hummingbird. Here. Tom Wheeler. Here. And Sylvia Annabelle has requested to be excused. contracts and the contract 
indicates exactly what those terms are. And so if there is a reason that a city manager needs to be terminated, it is present in the contract and is taken care of and can be done immediately if the, if, if the contract is so set up so that we don't go through this and it costs the city extra money also when you think about look at all your clauses in here of uh, 40 days and then they can appeal and then it's extra time and, and so forth. And so uh, when this was put together, uh, uh, I'm sure Tom and the, and the group had reasons to do this, uh, but in practicality of using it, it becomes very, very cumbersome. And uh, like I said, in reality, uh, in this last case that we had, oh, by the way, this has nothing to do with this. <laughs> um, in the last situation, we had a contract with that uh, person, and it became very difficult because we did have a contract, and items of the contract were not the same as items here, and so it became a potential legal nightmare. And so the uh, city attorney has, has recommended that we just uh, go back to a contract as, as any other employee. Um, it's my understanding that the charter would guide the, and control the writing of any contract that you could get into. So this is the the overall bare minimum that has to be met for any contract that the council goes into. I mean, you, you can't engage in a contract that goes against elements of the charter. So those mistakes were made in prior contracts and they were in, in conflict with the city charter. That was a mistake of the people making the contract, not of the city charter. It's my understanding. Not to say that this is perfect. It shouldn't be modified, maybe to be more either flexible or more specific in with or take some of the time frames out, or whatever it is that needs to be done. But we're looking at the city charter here. Any personal contracts, any personal uh, employees, or even um, councils. And, and their makeup and their decision making as individuals should be guided by this. Yes, so the, the contract specifically is not um, in conflict with this portion of your charter. The contract basically just spells out if I'm removed for cause, this is the process. If I'm removed without cause, this is the process. So, um, what you're doing is like adding another layer on top of what the contract already spells out and that's a disciplinary action. So if I were to be um, removed, if I, <laughs> I do not intend to be removed. <laughs> <laughs> manager would be removed for cause, that uh, disciplinary uh, action is spelled out in the personnel rules and regulations. If I'm removed without cause, then it's very simply a matter of the terms of my contract. Okay. Well, two things. One uh, it is that it, we pull this all out of here. Right. And a future council trying to hire a future city manager. They are no longer bound to put those requirements in that contract. So a star city manager might come and say, no, I mean, you can hire me, but I'm not going to do that. So this is, you know, that's that negotiation that happens. If right. it's in here, then it has to be in the contract. And that is what the charter is all about. Well, I can see your I can see your point because without the city attorney, um, uh, who was knowledgeable in con if contract law, but also your League of Arizona Cities is very good at providing guidance 
on contracts with city managers. So much of the language in my contract is language that's already been vetted by me, attorneys, as well as your city. Right, but a future city council might not go to the way the cities to get that advice. I, I mean, that's the, the, the but they would look at the last I contract. <laughs> They might decide, no, we don't like how that was done. We want to do it. Well, the point, the point is, I'm not trying to argue. I'm just trying to, the point is, is, her contract does not have all of this language in there. Like you're adding a level of complication to, to a very simple procedure. Her, con, her contract, and, and the employee's contract says, if, if you were fired for cause, this happens. If you're fired uh, uh, without cause, this happens. Well, and, and if I choose to leave, this is the other thing that happens. Yeah, so, well, we're in we put those elements of that contract in here to make, because this is the stone that we're just like our rules by for the function of the city. This is, a, this is my understanding is the final authoritative document for how the city should be conducting its business and hiring and firing a contract. Is it not? Yes, I would say that we. Yeah. we Changes that we need to add those elements to the contract in here. Okay. So I have the city attorney that provides you with the contract language. So. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, you, you're saying that the personnel policy um, contracts follow the personnel policies, basically? Uh, well, the contract uh, does allow for the city manager to be removed for cause. Uh -huh. Which would happen under the process as spelled out in the personnel rules and regulations. So, well, something directly, I'm sorry, directly to that in here, it says that the city manager is exempt from the, the, um, the, uh, the, the that whole, uh, right. personnel, personnel, yeah. so I mean, it, it, but that, your city attorney is recommending removing that language. That's the whole point. You ask about it, the city attorney is giving you a legal opinion, accept it, don't accept it, modify it, do whatever you want. We're, we're just bringing it to you and indicating, and I'm indicating that as a mayor who has had to navigate this document on several occasions, it is very, very difficult. To do in contractual language is so much simpler. That the municipal that seems to be pretty simple to me. <laughs> and I don't know. So, what, what is the difficulty? The timing, the times. Look at how many times are within, within not less than this many days this has to be done. Then they have this many days to appeal it. And then if they appeal it, you have this many days. But not more than that, do this and so forth. It stretches everything out. It costs the city at least another month's pay when, with a contract, it's over. Yeah. Wait, um, <clears throat> this is going to give a lot of control to the council, and it really sets your laws. How you remove somebody because it's a hard thing to remove if you manage. Now, when we put this in, I had to remove the city manager in almost 10 years into the chart remove for a city manager. It's not an easy thing, it's a lot of heartbreak and grief for the city, but it just sends some on your laws, you know, it tells you what you can do. And if you remove this section, you just got rid of all the laws, not to get there. Councils can have different views, but this is a law approved by the people. They think, you know, you need to get rid of it before you change something like that. Mr. Lewis, did you have anything else? The personnel policies are they lengthy? Governing discharge? Uh, I'm just wondering whether you could. Send those out. Oh, yeah. So well, we, actually, the entire document is 
Yeah, it's on the web, but we, we can we can definitely email you guys the personnel policy. solid document as far as 
scholars are going to proceed. I, I recommend, Mr. Chair, that we review the contracts, review this, and try to put streamline everything down into kind of what Daniel exactly what Daniel could, we, could we have the guidance of the attorney on that so that they would provide some sort of formatting and then we could address that? And as well as a copy of the contract, a generic copy of the contract. Or you can actually see my contract. <laughs> is, it, is it possible uh, maybe to get, it seems like there's a, a number of different um, concerns from there in terms of the process of doing it. it um, probably the city manager is from that side of the contract. The um, uh, employment director, what's it, what's it called, the, 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 the city the city attorney. I mean, if, if we could get a proposal maybe from staff, and, and council as to what what it is because it seems like you're driving the change here that you want to say I, I, I am letting you know that it is extremely cumbersome and that the council themselves has difficulty in understanding how it's done that's what I'm telling you. Right. So it needs to be cleaned up, but I'm just wondering if we can get some suggestions yeah, as ways to streamline this from the people who actually have to use it. Does that make sense? I, mean, I, don't, think, I don't think this needs a motion, but um, I think what Danielle suggested is having the city attorney go back and get the language streamlined so that we can keep something in the city charter, but that it doesn't hinder or hamper efforts to um, take a city manager um, to early retirement, as it were. Don't, don't we want something in the city charter that says um, how we remove the city manager? Yes, and that's, what we're, at, that's what we're asking. Staff. That's what we were just yes. asking. That's what we were just asking. What are we going to put in place? Well, that's what we were just yeah. asking. But to, to get the, to move the discussion along, if we can get um, another uh, you know, opinion, we have to. Also, you don't want to remove you don't want to remove section H either because that says you don't change anything within 90 days of an election. That's an important thing. Right. Um, I was just saying I don't know. Maybe it's not time to ask the city attorney to draft a new 3.09 because we have no idea what we want in 3.09. Maybe we need to take a look at the current contract as an example. Of and the personnel rules, and then we get some idea what we think 3.09 should say. If we think we need a 3.09, if we think that the charter should tie the hands of future city councils in negotiating these contracts or not. And I think it sounds like a lot of us do want that. Before I would make any sense, I just want to see the, the contract, see the rules, see what it looks like before I'm making decisions. So let me just be clear that we just sent you in kind of following along with Danielle's solution or suggestion that we uh, have input from the city attorney. I don't think we need input from the city attorney yet. I just want to see the contract and the rules. Well, there's no reason for the city attorney to be drafting anything until we tell the city attorney like what we have in mind. Can, can I say something? I wanted because we started timeline. And so for the sake of expediency, Maybe we could just have the attorney just put some clear point form, like nothing formal or anything, but just, just some guidance so that when we actually sit down to do it, we don't have to wait another meeting when we ask the attorney to, you know, guide our hands in some fashion. So we would just have a, that extra bit of documentation to sort of refer to so that maybe next meeting we could actually like put something together instead of waiting for a whole other meeting. I I, um, I I really agree with that streamlining, but I think we can probably achieve both goals because these things should be accessible yeah. right away, yeah. and it's going to take a while for the city attorney to write up some recommendations. So we could start taking on ourselves to look at these documents, mm -hmm. try to get our own ideas, and then see what the suggestions are by the next meeting. Is that yeah, there there are. Oh, I'll, I'll include them in both in your email to you guys tomorrow morning. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Did you have to see your nodding your head? Do you have to do your left hand to me? No. Okay, so we would be, just for my notes, so we would be, you would be providing us with uh, like an employment contract. Oh, and, and the personnel rules. rules. Correct. Mm -hmm. On the other side of the 
we want to set it up so that we do have a good you know, I would call a place where we have a good city manager and somebody's trying to railroad them out. We want to have them have a safe yeah. 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 and take it through the policy. Yeah. Yeah. And so that they can have a good solid ground saying, no, this I've got my rights too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> have it reflected in the contract as well yeah. as the charter. The public hearing is really important. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, yes, uh, along those lines, number H, I did have a comment about H. I know that Tom just mentioned something about it. Yes. Um, my suggestion, it's just it's just something that had come up this last time, um, is to come, just think about changing the language to 90 days after taking office rather than 90 days after the general election. The, there's almost 30 days on occasion that goes between the election and the general election and taking uh, office. And so that gives the council less than 90 days to try to work with the city manager to see if there is an issue to begin with. Does that make sense? It gives another, when, when this says 90 days, they're not getting 90 days to work with the city manager. They're getting sometimes three meetings to work for the city manager. Are you saying you want to start the clock as of the general election results? It starts in the 90 days? No, no, no the, that's what it is now. No. I want the clocks, I'm suggesting that it's better to have the clock start <coughs> upon taking the office. Okay, no. okay. but uh, uh, the newly elected people taking office, which is gotcha. December. First, I think it's the, it's first, the first meeting, meeting. Yeah. in December after the general election. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that could be December 7th. Mm -hmm. uh, does it make sense then to just still start at the, the election, just lengthen the time period? Because, I mean, you, you wouldn't want somebody between, you know, um, you wouldn't allow for that window between the election and when they take office. For them to do, I don't you know, know what you're doing. Removal, of course not. This says you can't remove that they can't be the city manager can't be removed until 90 days after the general election. Right. What I'm saying is that the, the, the um, that the process can't be started by, by, by pushing it to when the the the, um, the new uh, the, the, uh, the council takes off the uh, office then. Uh, there's that makes a gray area between the election time and more than the, the and inauguration day. So I'm just saying, if we still have it at election, we just lengthen the period of time to 120, to 120 days. days. I think it would be it, it won't leave this weird limbo. Well, I, I don't care. I don't know what that gray area is. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. understand yeah. what you're saying. It's not a gray area. I don't, I just don't the city manager is employed until he's until they're not employed. That, it's not a gray area. So it's thirty. It's ninety days, whether it starts the the first meeting in January or the at the general election. The city manager is still employed unless there's overt malfeasance. So that, so it doesn't make any difference in that sense. Okay, so but yes, there's an existing is, city manager. What? There's going to be an existing city manager right. up to that time, so will be they, they, so they they can remove the existing one then up until. So I'm saying if there's an election, because the, the president, president council could remove the city manager within that 90 days, start the removal process start the removal. within that 90 days, yeah. no matter what. Okay. Yeah, fifty council. It's the board council can't. Remove that manager for 90 days. Yeah. They can't come in and do as, in, as happened in Douglas okay. and the day after the election say you're fired. I got it. But what we're trying to do is put on us on the new council, give them a 90 day probation area for hunting. <laughs> yeah, that's what this is. All I'm, in, all I'm suggesting is that. It's 90 days after taking office rather than 90 days after election. Okay. And I don't care. I don't agree. If you wanted to do 103 days, 
I don't care. I'm just telling you what some of the issues are. I don't have a dog in the hunt. I understand that. I was just bringing up an additional issue of, okay, what if there's a spiteful city council that has an outgoing city council that cripples the incoming city council by firing their um, city manager? They can't fire them. They can start the process. They can start the process, but they can't fire them because because of the time frame. Isn't the general election for the city in Ireland? No, 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 no. But but if we change the rules and take away those 40 days, then they will be able to. We will be able to what? Fire them more quickly. That's the, the, well, they the, still have the all the same restrictions that are currently in place. So that would still be there, right? Well, they, they can still look at COVID.com. Right. I don't have it. I feel that we really consider moving that over to a policy of the new council and mayor who starts the 90 days. That way, they, they're the ones that have to work with the city manager. Or maybe the 120. Let's go there. How about 101? Yeah. I'll take it back to the city attorney, but sure. Yeah, I was, just, I was just trying to point out. Well, and you're, 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 you're presenting us with the, your experience, which is probably valuable. Don't bring the boss, it's going to cost us time and money. Right. Same time, but again. So let me pose this question for the on this whole thing. Okay, where are we now on this entire section? A through H. You know, table it until we get more information. Yeah, so I'm just trying to clarify here, but would somebody make a motion to this episode? We're going to still follow the last time's statement. I think the motion to take this uh, so, uh, until our next meeting. Let's sit in with our next, uh, next meeting with some answers, with, with some information, information that can give some answers here. There's, there's a motion in a second that there should be discussion with the three people. I'm not seeing, I'm not that wrong. Oh, okay. Let's try to add his hand up. We have a motion, yes. We have a motion to this end. Uh, just I mean, that this discussion about H is, I mean, it seems like we should maybe finish that so that we have some kind of consensus about what we'd like to do. Seems like something that's important. Uh, just, we're going to get around to it anyway. We don't want to lose the information or the, or the I mean, we've already dug into this issue pretty well. Maybe we can resolve it. <coughs> just come to some kind of consensus on what's a good idea and then. The motion is to table it from A through H. Tomorrow, tomorrow's actually actually going to the, the email to all of us some information on the city manager. So, mm -hmm. one point of order: a, a motion to table is done today. If, if this all goes away, there's no need. It's, it's, it's open for discussion. Though. A motion to table is not open for discussion. Nope. Uh, it's not Okay. So, all those in favor of tabling section 3.09A through H? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? We stand tabling section 3.09A through H. Also, with the caveat that we will be expecting information on contracts personnel. All right, should we move on? <laughs> Article 4, Administrative Departments, Offices, and Employees, Section 4.01, Administrative Departments, Offices. A, Creation of Departments, the Council, by ordinance, not inconsistent with the Charter, shall provide for the organization, conduct, and operation of several offices and departments of the city as established by this Charter. Creation of additional departments, divisions, offices, and agencies for the consolidation, alteration, or annihilation. Any comments? B. Officers and employees, the council should provide for the number, title, qualifications, powers, duties, and 
employee compensation for all officers and employees of the city. Go ahead. Okay. C. Assignment of powers and duties. The council may assign additional functions or duties to offices, departments, or agencies. Where the positions are compatible, the council may combine in one person the powers and duties of two or more offices created or authorized by the district. The basis for employment. Appointments and promotions in the administrative service of the city, except for the department heads and persons elected by the people, shall be made solely on the basis of merit, fitness, demonstrated by examination or other evidence of competence. I think that that's really great. Um, I want to just bring up the issue that not that, that does not include the, the hiring expedients because that, that's something that we've seen before where the city has not wanted to, to go out to certain types of advertising for uh, employment because it brought in too many um, uh, applications that they had to go through and they didn't have the time or, or manpower to do it. Um, I've heard that complaint multiple times. I think that that's uh, something we want to avoid that the criteria for hiring somebody should be based on D here, just as it's written. And, you know, the expedience of not finding somebody truly qualified um, is, is not a good excuse to just hire somebody. Does that make sense? No. No. <laughs> yeah, because it's solely based on their merit and fitness. Yes. So here, 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 you continue to look for someone until somebody fits those those two items, right? That's what I'm saying. But I've heard, you know, directly from a number of people in, on the council that they were choosing somebody because they were not willing to, you know, they have not gone back out to you know, it was pointed out that the person's uh, application was deficient in X number of ways. Well, um, and they didn't do it correctly. That's, I, that's, I that's agree. That's that the basis for anything in the charter. I mean, it's it's right there. It's supposed to be that. If you do it that way, then that's then we're gonna, that's that's not going to be fine. So, yeah. yeah, I think it's right. And, yeah. and this is a general note, not tied to personal sense. And it's specific enough that I think it would have lawyers to raise a complaint for somebody's cousin getting hired and they're not they don't not really qualified for the job, but we can fall back on this or somebody can fall back on this to bring the question forward. Okay. We've got a section four point zero two city clerk. Appointment and duties. The city manager. With approval of the council, shall appoint an officer with the title of city clerk who shall be responsible to the council. <coughs> the city clerk shall give notice of all council meetings, keep the minutes of council meetings, ordinances, and resolutions authenticated by the city clerk's signature and recorded in full and books kept for that purpose. The city clerk shall perform such other duties that are required by this charter or by ordinance. I have a question about this. More to ask the city manager. Manager, and that is, is there anything that talks about the city website and ordinances? It doesn't talk about the charter. Um, about maintaining who maintains the city uh, website. It doesn't specify that, no. That may be something to be added in here. What do you mean by maintains the website? Do you mean maintains the post or yeah, the content? The content, yeah, maintains it. So if you need, yeah, if you need work on it, it's going to be. You're, the city clerk is, that, I that, think is responsible for that that's probably project. spelled out more in job descriptions than it would be here, I would think. You think? Because it doesn't say anything about the city website. It's pretty powerful information outlet. Mm -hmm. Of course when the chart was written or work right. 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 Yeah, right. I know. Right. Or so that's why, that's why I thought that it was right. 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 not in eighty seven. Anything in here either about what you do by putting things on the website. I mean, you know, it, it, the appointment and duties doesn't describe them as saying that you're going to be. 
responsible for making sure that the public knows this stuff. The yeah. postings. And so, you do, right? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, so I, I, be, giving notice of all council meetings, keeping the minutes. Just council meetings. It doesn't say anything else about our meetings or other other notice of well, those are options. Duty, those, oh, those, those, are, those, are, those are my duty under, 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 under my job description. I don't, I don't think there's city anything about City of 3.2.1 covers the city clerk. Does it say anything about the website? It, well, not, it does not say website specifically, but it also doesn't say official bulletin board or any of those things. Yeah. It just says the clerk shall perform those administrative responsibilities and duties sure. that are conferred upon him or her by the council in addition to those specified in this code. So, yes, sir, you remember that yeah. Chinese TV? There's other documents that govern the city also. This if you are too inclusive, then this can only be changed every three years to five years, depending on what you all want. And that would hamper, unless it, if, if you're trying to be all inclusive, this isn't the document to do that in. The city code is the document. Um, I, I feel uh, I really agree with you, uh, Fred, and I've noticed in a number of different places throughout there is. Um, it's about posting to the public. And that if we did have just a paragraph or a section in the city charter that demanded that it on, on, on a publicly accessible website, whether it's the city website or what it is, was considered just like the wall on city, at City Hall, the bulletin board at City Hall, where it's required, if that's mentioned in here, where it's required to post you know, any, any legal posting that we included. Now, it, it, this day and age, that we included, it has to be accessible via the web to the citizens of this um, you, you can always do this like, the, like we do in contracts with publishers and, and all of that is to say uh, all media, current, all current and foreseeable media. But it's going to change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you can't, you can't yeah. be specific mm -hmm. and say, the website or Facebook or something that you can include all current and future media. And I think that that's one of those things that really think would be a great blanket. And one of that is Stan, one of it says here, it says give notice of all council yeah. meetings. Isn't that, isn't that what we're saying? Yeah, well, I, the council meetings and, you know, things like, a, you know, a special election or, a, you know, any of those kinds of legal postings. The only, when, when you're talking about the contract law um, of posting all media, that's like for rights to your image or, or something like that. But if you <laughs> say that we had to publish, the city had to publish it in all media, yeah. That's, no, you're right. That, that you're so absolutely right. I'm just thinking that you know, appropriate, media, appropriate, or you know, um, yeah, something, something like that. Who manages the website? Like who manages? Just we, 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 we manage the website. Yeah. 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 Y
No, because you're you're a charter city rather than a statutory city. That's right? the whole point. Yeah, that we're self-governing gives us the responsibility to be more specific. Well, then why does why does it apply here? Because you're including it to apply. It's what's in the charter and the state statute and city code that governs us. Well, I'm willing to let loose of that if it just comes from I just would like to see some kind of something in one of the ordinances about who's responsible for this important communication mechanism. I don't think it's in I don't think it's in your job description probably. There's that wonderful sentence in job descriptions that say other duties as assigned. <laughs> other duties as assigned. <laughs> somebody that, you know, 
that, that's also being hired by somebody else and might be in a legal conflict. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? It's, it's just saying the council shall appoint a city attorney. Whether it's on contract. At their pleasure. Okay. And, and so they're, if they are doing that, if there's, a, job, if there's a vacancy for sickness, if there's an interim, yeah. mm -hmm. in any kind of situation, they can they can do that. It's up to the council to avoid conflict of interest. And isn't there something in the Fairs of State Bar that just allows for the consequences? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so I, I just don't understand then about the you know uh, hiring the, the county legal office to, to also serve us when there are potential conflicts. We haven't heard that. Was that we, they we've hired them in the past. In the past, but I'm yeah. saying like this when this was in place in the past. Yeah. That you're saying that we wouldn't be doing that in the future? I have no idea yeah. what the council would do in the future. Well, I'm just asking if this precludes that. No. It no. Doesn't. No. Each time that the county attorney's office that was representing the city had a potential conflict, they brought that to the council to either waive that conflict or for us to go out under B and hire a different attorney. Maybe then they're, they're obligated by law to do that, to bring it to the council's attention. And I know that that happened at least three times that we had to make a decision to waive conflict. I think this is the point where we should actually read this now in section B, Council Control of Legal Services. The council will have control over all litigation in the city and may employ attorneys in addition to the city attorney to take charge of any litigation or to assist the city attorney therein. The council should provide for compensation for such additional legal services rendered on behalf of the city. Yeah, I understand that. I just this is a section we're talking about a city treasurer who's an individual, right? We're not the, 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 that wouldn't be hiring out for city treasurer services, would it? Um, the city clerk would well, be potentially you could, but it so happens that traditionally and certainly uh, presently the um, finance director has been named as the treasurer. There's nothing that precludes it from being two different people. It just so happens that with us, it's been one and the same. Okay, I'm just so these are not necessarily people, employees that we're talking about: city treasurer, city attorney, uh, the city clerk. These could also be services hired as sure. subcontractors. Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, and everybody's comfortable with that. I'm, I'm personally not. I don't like that at all. I would like to specify that these be John When it was originally written, it was for a single attorney, not for a firm. Yeah. That's what it sounds like here. Yeah. That the intention is. It might hire other attorneys in that firm, but we always are like one attorney. It wasn't like the nebulous could be rotating anybody. Okay. I mean, that, that's. But that was, you know, that was 30 years ago, too. So. Are you saying you want this to be amended to say that the city attorney shall be an employee of the city and this will be his only occupation or he won't take other clients? Is that what you're suggesting? That would be my personal preference. Mm -hmm. I think that avoids, uh, I mean, I think that keeps the city attorney squarely in the, um, you know, under the, in the interest of the city of Bisbee and not pulled by any other things in small ways or large. But it's very restrictive. Really restricting council. Can we hire? But no, you, you, you know, B is still there. You can hire all kinds of other people, you know, for any other type of thing. But, but what, if one what, if, what, if, what if the city attorney is out for um, two months for surgery? There's no city attorney. What well, do you do? No, but the, the, the city council can hire additional attorneys to fill in and do all this. That's what, that's what Section B allows. Right. So there's no reason for it to have a city employee, to, for the attorney to be a city employee, as long as they're under contract with the city, the other council. I mean, I think it's very, very similar to a city manager where you have somebody who is, their, their only interest is of the city. You wouldn't want to hire a, a county employee to be a city manager. Because, because uh, well, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, do we have enough work for a full-time attorney? 
But it's still it is our city. It is our city magistrate. That's correct. Because they abolished it. Okay. I um, I make a motion to table this until we get the other information about um, the about three point zero nine because this is that uh, personnel policy that we were going to take a look at and decide whether if we remove the controls of the city man, you know, firing the city manager, then then we might have to change this. These exceptions include these people in the personnel policy that their contracts would be guided by this personnel and merit based policy that connected. So, shouldn't we table this yeah. until? Yeah. Or they yeah. Well, well, you were saying that the contract was guided by this personnel policy, and if the contract is going to, it, it, it shouldn't exempt. The city manager, city clerk, city treasurer, city attorney, city magistrate, and department heads. But this is this is the contracts have to be guided by the city, but by the personnel policy. This is this is this is an appeal process for if, if you are requiring an employee. This is their appeal process. This is, this is not an appeal process for officers. This is officers and department heads. And, and, and and so forth. This is the appeal process for the people below the director's position. I don't see that this is an appeal. This is the merit pay system for the purpose of regulating, controlling appointments, promotion, promotions, discharges, discharges, reinstatement, policies, personnel policy. policy. Yeah, but that's that's the employee contract. That's that's the contract. So contract. Saying that, that so actually civil service is. We should to protect the employee. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Read it again, please. Yes, please. Uh, the council shall, by ordinance, establish a standardized civil service system of personnel policy and procedures and a merit pay system for the purpose of regulating and controlling the appointments, promotions, demotions, discharges, and reinstatements of all officers and employees of the city. Except those elected by the people, and also except the city manager, city clerk, city treasurer, city attorney, city magistrate, and department heads. I think the key word there is standardized civil yeah. service. Mm -hmm. So standard policy across yeah. boards. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so so is there another personnel policy that guides the the contracts that, that you were describing, like the city manager's contract? This is, this, is, this is excluded. It's a contract that they're, yeah. yeah. This is for the, this is for um, other employees, right? And other than department heads. So that this is for people that are on contract. Right. Out of hourly, right? Hourly enforcement. Okay, so, they, so for the non hourly wage people, I mean, you're saying, understand <laughs> that we're talking about discarding this whole 3.09. The, the reason given was that the personnel policy was the guidance for the uh, for the contracts. Okay, but if we're saying that if we keep saying that all of those people are um, not not or they're exempt from the personnel policy, then how does it guide their contracts? I mean, it's it's a that's a circular logic. We have two things that we're discussing. I don't, yeah, I don't think this is saying they're exempt from the personnel policy. No. This is saying that the council is going to set up instructions for the civil service department or civil service commission, and these are the people it'll cover, mm -hmm. and it doesn't cover the ones that are elected. This it's the civil service system of personnel policy and procedures. No, and I think that's it's kind of the form. Can, can we get some clarity on that? Is that to you? Are you saying that you think that you say, that you think that let's assume for a second the city manager is fired? That you think that a civil service should over can overrule the council who does the hiring and firing by having that city manager come to them 
and appealing it to the city council. That, is that what you're asking? I, 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 no. This is under the section. No, this is under the section personnel policy. I understand. I totally understand. Right. And we're so, talking. You were talking about the city manager. Right. And so, it sounds to me like this is exempting the city manager, city clerk, city treasurer, yes. city attorney yes. from right. the personnel policy and procedure. No, 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 no. no, no. From the civil service system of yeah. personnel policy. Okay. Which is different. Within the within the policies, there's civil service. It's exempting them from that section of the policies. All right. They've got their own. They've got their own. Okay. So there's a whole other section. I, okay. I wasn't clear. Okay. okay. I got you. Okay. So we move on then. Okay. So where are we? Uh, where are we? I lost you. <laughs> personnel director. The manager shall appoint the personnel director, and who shall administer, administer excuse me, the personal, personnel system of the city. C, Civil Service Commission. The mayor, with the approval of the council, shall create a civil service commission consisting of five qualified electors of the city, which shall have the following powers and duties. One, to formulate recommendations regarding the city's personnel policy for presentation to the council after review by the manager, personnel director, and the department heads of the city. Two, to investigate and report significant violations of sound personal administration to the manager and council. And three, to hear and de mediate grievances in charge of the discrimination against the city submitted to it by employees and officers of the city. No questions on that? We're going to be personnel rules. The manager, personnel director, and the civil service commission shall formulate and propose formal, excuse me, formal personal rules to the council for its consideration and adoption. E, employees council, a representative from each city department shall be elected by the employees of that department to serve on the employees council. The function of employees council should be to foster good and harmonious employer relationships relations in the city. The employees of the council may make recommendations to the personnel director, the city manager, civil service commission, and to the council regarding the personnel policy and rules. The employees council may assist employees and officers of the city in presenting grievances and charges of discrimination to the city for resolution. Yeah. Okay. Point of information. Are city employees um, in any union? Are they covered by a union at all? Civil Service Commission agreements proceed <coughs> upon the recommendation of the Civil Service Commission. The Council should formulate specific procedures for the presentation of the Commission of Employee Agreements and Complaints of Discrimination. Including the rules and procedures in filing grievances, scheduling of hearings, presentations of positions by grievance and the city, and the rendering of the Civil Service Commission of its findings and decisions to grievance in the city. And this this whole section 4.06 says personnel policy and procedure, right? I mean, not, no, this is a civil service personnel. Well, it doesn't say that. It should specify well, that. It's underneath the whole. It is underneath the whole. What is the personnel policy? A, civil service. Well, that's yeah. one element of the personnel policy, as far as I can see here. But this section is all that this document talks about for personnel policy. No, the personnel, personnel director is not um, part, part of the civil service. And then, and then C specifically says civil service commission. Yeah, that's specific within the within the each one of the points that it's specific to. Well, it doesn't specifically say that there's a personnel policy for these people that are exempted, and that, that, that that's mandatory in the charter. It doesn't say a lot of things. Well, I know well, it's, it's a saying, guiding document. It's not all inclusive. I understand. I understand. What are you trying to say? My point is this. It was the argument was put forth that the reason to eliminate the um, 3. section 3.09 was that there is a person.
personnel policy in place that covers that. But with that Sean, the city manager, the way it works is the city manager's contract, the contract governs, but then the contract for certain situations refers you to the personnel rules. Okay, but there's nothing stating that the contract has to include the things that are included in 3.09, which. But that's what we're going to talk about. Yes, so it's for we tabled it. We're going to talk about it after we see your contract, see these things from the city council, see the person. Okay. Okay. I just I would I would like to be able to come back to this if we once we look over that we find out that this, these exemptions are are are. We get to do whatever we want, right? Nope. But if we want to come back to it, we can. Yeah. I don't think we need to. I think it's two different issues. I, I think that we'll probably yeah. learn more when we see the actual personnel. Right. You know, yeah. Things. But if it turns out that. So we have the final thing. We're going to go over this all one more time. Yeah. So we have final things to do. Yeah. yeah. Again, this, is it, this, is, this whole section was in regard to personnel policy, in regard to civil service <coughs> employees, uh, wagers, mm -hmm. and the whole system of grievance policies that they could be complained against. Okay. We move on to section 5.01, appointing boards and commissions. A creation and evolution. <laughs> the council may by ordinance create or abolish boards, commissions, or committees as in its chosen and required, and may grant to them such power and duties as are consistent with the provisions of this charter. Section 5.02, standing committee. A, establish the fact that the panel are hereby established as a standing committee of this, well, excuse me, a standing committee to the city. One, finance committee. Two, planning zoning commission. Three, design review board. Four, board of adjustments. And five, police and fire and those three committees. These are committees that are. The time of police and yeah. fire wasn't there when you did it. Uh, uh, it was it was added under uh, Jack. Yeah, one of the sometime later. <laughs> yeah, Jack Jack asked for that to be added. Um, yeah, I think remember that too. Yeah, yeah I don't. I've got to tell you, I don't know why. Just I, I think it's because it requires you to have that committee at all times. You do away with some of these others. And I, and again, I, 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 I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why that is singled out as, as one of the more important committees. Hey, yo, where's the committee? Yeah, where's the charter That's actually the point here. It's the you're on your own. We're not a standing committee. We're not a standing committee. We're a standing committee. We're a standing committee. We can sit down. Jesus. I'm just bringing that. Absolutely, because these others are there because of the workings of the city. Yes. The police and fire is kind of an odd duck to put with those. If you want to keep it there, that's great. I'm just bringing it up that it doesn't quite fit the same as the others. I'm okay with it, though. Yeah. I don't think it's hurting anything. But it, it says it's an advisory committee, yeah. and the others. I won't say that they're legislative, but they're kind of being impactful. And like the uh, design review or the board of adjustment can make decisions. And that, 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 is, that makes them legal, a legal entity. Whereas the advisory committee is more of what I think you ought to give us some chocolate Hershey's at lunchtime. Yeah, but I think probably the advisory part makes. It's important that they're not like the others. If we, yeah. if we just had a police and fire committee, what would that mean? Yeah. This is an advisory committee. Yeah. It doesn't seem harmful to be there. So, yeah. should we make the effort to pull it out? No. 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 Personally, I don't think so. But. I, I see the point, though. It's, it, you're, there's all these other commissions that are. Um, that are not deemed worthy of that. I mean, the Arts Commission or whatever is not considered a standing commission, even though, you know, those are all these 
does it, you know, meets every month like every other commission? Well, these committees, uh, standing committees, actually have a function, and this is what the mayor is referring to them on the police and fire, the finance committee actually make decisions about money and, and uh, contracts of buying and selling. We buy land and so forth. Uh, planning and zoning is very definitely a mayor that makes decisions about the situations both for the city and for, for individuals coming before the uh, planning committee. <laughs> Same the design review board, they make decisions relative to a set of guidelines we have. Uh, board of adjustments also makes decisions. Uh, I swear I can agree with it. The police and fire, what are they fired to what end? I don't know. Uh, what that that's what I'm saying. saying. So, but it's not yeah. harmful. No, it's not harmful. I don't see I don't see any point to, to argue about it. Oh. Right. But it's inconsistent. Right. It is. Yeah. It is. We're not going to worry about inconsistencies in this at this point. It is. There's no, lots of inconsistencies. It hasn't been very active, I don't think, at least. That's not. Okay, should we move on then? Yeah. yeah. Uh, section 5.03 Mayor and Manager, ex officio members. A. Boards and Commissions. The Mayor, main point. The Mayor or any member of the Council or the Manager as an ex officio member but, uh, without voting privileges. Of any of all boards and commissions. This is kind of an advisory role. Article 6.01 Finance and Taxation. Physical. A. Powers of City. The powers of the city concerning budget, taxation, financial, and phys physical powers shall be limited only by the provisions of the Constitution and laws of the state and this charter. 6.2 Taxing powers. The Council shall have the power to levy and collect editorial and excise taxes, including, but not limited to, business license tax and all other taxes not permitted by federal, state, constitution, or laws, for any of all the following purposes. A. Indebtedness. Pay the interest will maintain the sinking fund of the bounded indebtedness of the city. B. Libraries and public buildings will establish the support of free public libraries for the construction and maintenance of public buildings. And C. Advertising for advertising and promoting the advantages of the city These are the powers of the city. D, reserve fund, create a reserve fund for replacement of equipment for the furnishing of city services and the needs of all municipalities only operating utilities. E, general expenses for the general expenses occurred in the operation of the city government. F, for public improvements, for local public improvements. G, sales tax, the city, the council had the power to increase or decrease the transaction privilege tax only upon approval by the majority of the qualified electors voting in the regular schedule of general election. Any questions on taxes? <laughs> okay, do you have a Well, I'm just ruminating on the sales tax. It does say the regular schedule of general election. Why couldn't it be under like state law? State law prohibits it. Yes, you think? Yeah, they came back. They came back against. Uh, uh, I think it was Tucson. Tucson. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. But I do know on this, um, and look, it's a big deal. But uh, that taxes. Well, the TPP. That taxes. That TPP. That's fine. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> The donor, what I pay taxes to the TPP tax, that is a small amount of money. That's an excellent reason. <laughs> Section A, 6.3, <clears throat> manager submission of budget and reporting requirements to the city council. A, expenditures and income. On or before the second regular council meeting in May of each year, or on such a day that each year it shall be fixed by the council, the manager shall prepare and submit in writing to the council the estimates of each department of the city and the manager's own personnel report, recommendations and estimates of the probable expenditures of the city 
for the next fiscal year. Such a report should state in detail the amounts required to meet all expenditures necessary for city purposes, including payment of interest, seeking funds, and outstanding indebtedness. Such a report should also include an estimate of the amount of income expected from all sources and an estimate of the amount required to be raised by taxation to cover such expenditures. Quite a good information. I don't know what a sinking fund is. What is a sinking fund? Is that enough? When you go in debt. Status of investments. The city manager is to provide to the city council a monthly year to date of the fiscal report and according to the report on status and deposition of all investments in the city fund. Okay. 
but uh, we don't ourselves have a money manager that does work with our money. It's a pool. You, you can't take advantage of it if you have that sort of extra money. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have, we, we, yeah, I know we have money in those. Yeah, well, I know we have money in those. Just as a point of information, the public um, pension fund money. Um, we pay that into the pension fund, but that's our money to be invested. Is that correct? They invest. Uh, they invest it, but they don't invest it necessarily in Arizona. Right. In fact, they don't. That is correct. That that is a uh, so not a. It's not a financial institution. Well, and it's not as it's not overseen by the state treasurer. That's a private uh, a group that. Place with that money. Okay. Farm centers. Okay. Farm centers. Well, they invest heavily in private equity. Yeah. But it's not a state. No, it's not. It's a state fund, but it's not regulated by the treasurer's office. It's the only retirement fund that's not regulated by the state treasurer. Therefore. The oversight is not there, yeah. as with the other problems. No. And we have no, yeah. we have no regulations. No, Who said that? Who said that? The state, state legislature. The state legislature. The lobbyists said that. The state legislature. Right. Covered. Their pensions are covered by this public system. Yeah. 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 So yeah, too bad. It should be led to it. That's why this is a Right. Real quick, if, if anybody has, if you don't mind, just while you're on this, real quick, anybody has an opportunity, go to the Arizona Republic site, uh, and they're doing. Uh, they were doing. Uh, they interviewed me a couple weeks ago, uh, but they're doing a uh, investigative reporting on the ESBRS. Oh, and um, oh, it's it's um, it's dramatic. Yeah, a lot going on. Is it is it illegal? It's the it's in, uh, it's the improper. The entire project. They're they're having uh, it's the new board, the new and improved board is uh, having meetings at uh, the Four Seasons at five hundred fifty dollars a night for those employees. Yeah, basically that. We're on the wrong board. <laughs> All right, let's move on. <laughs> Section 56.08, independent audit review financial transactions of city CPA. A certified public accountant. For the end of each fiscal year, the council shall designate an independent certified public accountant who shall perform an independent audit for the city of, of the accounts and transactions of the city. B, audit reports. At the end of each fiscal year, such accountants shall perform an audit of accounts and other evidence of financial transactions in the city government and shall submit an audit report that is consistent with generally accepted accounting principles, including recommendations concerning policy and fiscal procedures to the council and management. Okay. C, special audits. The council may call for special audits as it may deem necessary or appropriate. D, post audits. Such independent certified public accountant within specifications approved by the council shall post audit the books and documents kept by the city and in any separate or subordinate accounts kept by any other office, department, or agency in the city government. This is posting the book here for the audit. E, personnel. In personal interest of CPA and city, such independent certified public accountant shall have no personal interest direct or indirect in the fiscal management of the city government or any of its officers in our young uncle. <laughs> it's seven o'clock. You want to go to seven thirty? We're going to need two hours. We want to wait. I'm going to go now. Close now. You want to close now? Yeah. Okay. This is text from the law. Article seven. Yeah. Article seven. Seven thirty. Yeah. Seven thirty. Okay. So we put up some clothes here. I ask one thing of the player. I, I know I'm over the level of it. Tell me exactly where I can go 
in the state, whatever, to find out what we how we have to put this summer down. Oh, it's going to be in statutes. I'm going to have to go back and okay. get the correct information, and I'll Have also mm -hmm. and I'll also talk to our city attorney as well to make sure I have something. Okay. With and I, I already wrote a note how specific the language correct. Okay, cool. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, the ARS and the elections. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, you look that up at home. So yeah. Read your look at I'll say. I'm going to go to the next one.